Have you noticed how much petrol costs these days? Here in Ireland, it costs over €100 Euros to fill an average family car. Many in the media are blaming the sabre-rattling between Iran, Israel and America in the Straits of Hormuz. The Republicans are even blaming Obama. All the while, Syria burns in the background. What if there's a reason in economics much closer to home? Well, there is. And that reason is the central banks. Central banks all over the world are responding to a mega debt crisis, the consequence itself of years of reckless bank lending, with more and more free money and lower and lower interest rates. And in so doing, they are creating a kind of a super bank monster who believes that you can solve a problem of too much debt with yet more debt. Look at the shambles in Greece in the last few days. The Greeks borrowed 150 billion euros just to wipe out 100 billion of debt. So they're still in more debt. Is it any wonder that Greek interest rates, rather than falling, are now rising? But forget Greece for a minute. Everywhere else, interest rates are as near to zero as is possible. In the US, the Federal Reserve has said it will keep interest rates as low as possible for as long as necessary. The Bank of Japan, the Bank of England and the ECB are all at the same game. Now in China, we may well refer to this year as the year of the dragon, but in the rest of the world, we could definitely refer to it as the year of the central bank. Because central banks are injecting liquidity, trying to reflate a bubble in order to avoid the consequences of the bursting of a bubble in the first place. This makes no sense. It'll only push the crash out a few more years, and when the next crash comes, it's going to be bigger and more devastating. Now let's just get a handle, as average citizens, on how much money is being printed in our name. In the last three and a half years, Britain, Europe, Japan and the US have pumped $8.7 trillion into the banking system to save the banks. Saving the banks has cost more money than it costs to fight the Second World War, the First Gulf War, put a man on the moon, clean up after last year's Japanese tsunami, and the entire African aid budget for the last 30 years, all put together. Now this is an enormous amount of cash given to the banks in your name. Now obviously with all this money sloshing around the world, the price of other assets are rising because there's simply so much cash looking for a new home. For example, why would anybody in the markets hold on to something that has been printed every day like cash when you can buy with it something that's actually running out like oil? The basic rule of supply and demand is pushing the price of oil through the roof and you are feeling this at the pump. Same is happening in the gold market. But here's the rub. What goes in must ultimately come out at some stage. The cash is ultimately going to find its way into asset prices and then shunt its way on to inflation. So what is going to happen then? Well then the central banks are going to have to raise interest rates rapidly and maybe much more aggressively than any of us expect right now. Remember 30 years ago United States interest rates were pushed up to 20% in order to wring inflation out of the system. So could the greatest monetary splurge in human history, which we are now witnessing, be followed by a 1980s style whiplash in interest rates, the likes of which we haven't seen for a generation? The answer is quite possibly yes. Stock markets all over the world, particularly in China, are beginning to wobble. Now, could this lead to a crash? Could this signal the beginning of the end of this rally? Or could it just be the end of the beginning of yet more and more central bank financing? Ultimately though, interest rates will have to rise, causing financial whiplash on a scale that we have not seen for many, many years.